This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 86. Are you future-focused or present-focused? The Marshmallow Experiment by Derek Sivers of Sivers.org. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Living Daily, the podcast that brings you the best in personal development and productivity every day of the week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Justin Mollick. What's going on, old friends? Welcome back to OLD, that is Optimal Living Daily. Welcome back to another edition of Sivers Sunday, where I read from the blog of an extremely fascinating guy, Derek Sivers. I relate to his life story on multiple levels, and you can learn more about how creepy that is by listening to my first ever reading of his back in episode 44. That's a special episode for me for lots of reasons, so do check that out if you haven't already. And before we get into it, I'm giving away the book Minimalism, Live a Meaningful Life by The Minimalists to a random email subscriber. So if you'd like to be in the drawing to win, plus get a bunch of free stuff from me, you can join by texting the word OPTIMAL to 44222 or visit my site, oldpodcast.com. Once you sign up, you'll automatically be entered. Plus you'll receive the free money tracking spreadsheet and video tutorial I made just for you to go along with it. But for now, let's start optimizing your life. Are you future-focused or present-focused? The Marshmallow Experiment by Derek Sivers of Sivers.org. What I'm about to tell you is one of the most interesting things I've read or heard in the last few months, and I know you're going to love it, so please read to the end. The Marshmallow Experiment. Forty years ago, at a nursery school at Stanford University, psychology professor Walter Michel ran an experiment. A bunch of four-year-olds were brought into a room one at a time. They were given one marshmallow and told they were allowed to eat it immediately, but if they could wait 15 minutes without eating it, they'd be given a second marshmallow and could eat both. 70% of the kids ate the marshmallow right away. Only 30% of the kids could wait the full 15 minutes to get the second marshmallow. This experiment has been repeated in other countries, Brazil and Japan, over the years, and the ratio stays the same. Two-thirds can't wait. One-third, wait. But here's the interesting part. 15 years later, the researchers followed up and found that those kids who waited for the second marshmallow scored, on average, 250 points higher on the SAT test and were higher achievers in whatever field they had chosen, academic, athletic, artistic. They were all around more successful and happier. So the ability to delay gratification is one of the best indicators of future success. Your time focus. So what are you really doing when you delay gratification? You're giving more importance to the future than the present. Willing to give up a little pleasure in the present to benefit your future self. The great book, The Time Paradox, notes that we all have a different time focus that greatly shapes how we think and act. Future-focused people. For future-focused people, long-range goals fuel today's decisions and actions. This keeps them ambitiously working, saving, and planning for a better life. Self-discipline and the ability to delay gratification are key. Future-focused people are more successful professionally and academically. They also eat well, exercise regularly, and schedule preventative health exams. But by always looking through the present to the next goal, they often do not fully appreciate the present. Think of the stereotype of the successful executive who is always too busy for his family. Friends and family require your attention to be in the present. Present Present-focused people. Present-focused people actively seek activities and relationships that bring pleasure, variety, immediate gratification, and short-term payoffs. They avoid anything tedious, requiring effort, maintenance, or routine. They're playful and impulsive, engaging in leisure activities until it becomes boring. Present-focused people are more likely to gamble, use drugs and alcohol. They're less likely to exercise, eat well, floss, or get regular health exams. They are the least likely to be successful. While some present focus is needed to enjoy life, too much present focus can rob life of the deeper happiness of accomplishment. Past focus. How you view the past is also important because we see our lives as having a trajectory. If you remember the past as happy, you predict your future will be happy. If you are haunted by an unhappy past, you probably predict your future to be unhappy too. What causes or changes your focus? Though the experiment with four-year-olds shows that we have a built-in tendency, we can intentionally change our focus. Ask a future-focused person to name every background sound they can hear or where their body is touching their chair. Their focus will change to the present. Ask a present-focused person to describe their ultimate career, 
then brainstorm step-by-step ways to achieve those goals. Their focus will change to the future. Circumstances change focus. You need safety and stability in the present to start thinking about the future. Cavemen needed a full present focus at all times to survive in the wild and find food each day. It was only after the development of agriculture that people could spend more time thinking about the future. People who lived in tropical climates had less future focus than people who lived in places with cold winters, since winters required planning and saving. Political and economic instability also caused people to focus more on present survival than long-term investing of time or money. Balance is best. Please don't think this means we should all be extremely future-focused. The happiest and most affected people are balanced, equally high in future focus and present focus, and viewing the past as positive. When you have work to finish, be future focused. When your work is done and it's time to relax, be present focused. During family holidays, be past focused to enjoy family customs, which leads to the most colorful example of this need for balance. Ghana football or soccer team. The Ghana national football team always played beautifully and creatively, but were at the bottom of the league because they often lost for not adhering to the discipline rules of the game. In the context of this story, let's say they were very present focused. In 2004, they brought in a tough new coach from Serbia, Radomir Dujkovic. He relentlessly focused on discipline, toughness, goal scoring, and punctuality. He set high expectations for future success, telling them they could get into the semifinals for the World Cup if they worked hard. Sure enough, in 2006, with their great combination of present-focused creativity and a new future-focused desire to win, they almost won the World Cup, only losing to Brazil in the final game. They did win the FIFA Most Improved Team of the Year award. You just listened to the post titled, Are You Future Focused or Present Focused? The Marshmallow Experiment by Derek Sivers of Sivers.org. Another Sivers Sunday down. And crazy, I'm only two weeks away from my 100th episode. That's just nuts. It feels like yesterday that I was so happy to reach my 50th episode. And I do have some special stuff happening for my 100th episode, but you're going to have to wait a little longer before I announce anything. And speaking of announcing things, if you'd like to hear my announcements or show your support for the show and get free gifts and be entered to win free books and a lot more, you can join the old family of life optimizers for free by texting the word OPTIMAL to the number 44222. Or you can join through my site, oldpodcast.com. It's really a great way to show your support for the podcast without actually contributing any money which, by the way, you can do at oldpodcast.com if you want to help pay for the bills and keep this thing going. But no pressure. Being part of my mailing list will still make me really happy, so please come visit me at oldpodcast.com to join, or again, text OPTIMAL to 44222. And that's 86 episodes in the bank. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you again tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.